NCTV 45, the train, anytime on your time. This program was provided through funding from Cedars Restaurant in Newcastle, Pennsylvania. A special thanks to Cedars featuring Middle Eastern, Italian, and American cuisine. RNA Screen Printing Newcastle is the place to go for signs, shirts, hats, vinyl lettering, embroidery, magnets, vehicle lettering, banners, window decals, and they can put your design on many items. They have decals for vehicles and signs for all your advertising needs. Great selection of sizes and styles of regular or glitter t-shirts. RNA can iron on a logo while you wait and can do any school logo. RNA Screen Printing, 1217 Moravia Street, Newcastle, open Monday through Friday, 9 to 4. Call 724-652-22. Today's program was furnished by a grant from the Beanery Depot in Delhi featuring coffee, made to order subs, and snacks. The Beanery Depot in Delhi in Mahoningtown. Corner, everybody. I'm Alex Laverson, and we have our producer here, Mr. Angelo Parada, joining us today. And we're going to discuss um, some very interesting things going on in the Steelers' locker room. Um, unless you've been living under a rock lately, um, it's pretty common knowledge by now that mostly everybody knows that James Harrison, a Steelers icon, is now. A New England Patriot. Angelo, what are your thoughts and comments? Well, you know how you send the spy into the other camp? Mm hmm. There's always information and misinformation. Mm hmm. So, would you tarnish your legacy for $59,000? Mm hmm. Uh, depending on how bad you need that money. <laughs> here's, here's the thing. Um, the last 24 hours or so, it's been coming out through various media outlets or social media outlets that um, a lot of the players weren't happy with the way James Harrison was acting in the locker room this past year, whether it was leaving the stadium early or not even showing up for practices or game day if he wasn't going to dress, to not visiting Ryan Shazier in the hospital. Um, it's kind of becoming apparent now, at least according to the media, that he was becoming a major distraction and was forcing his way out. And this is what I always say. Well, you had to know, first of all, listen, you had to know that the Patriots, who have had the flake gate, taken pictures, Kodak moments, Polaroid moments, uh, scouting problems, long games, missed calls, you know, you had to know that they were going to be part of the, yeah, we'll pick them up type of thing. I mean, if you didn't know that, then uh, we need to really test your brain. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, I think you hit the nail on the head. Bill Belichick... This is definitely a Bill Belichick thing. And I'm not necessarily saying it's right or wrong, but you're, you're kind of right. You kind of had to expect this. Now, the thing is, it's safe to say James Harrison had no trade value. Well, here's the thing you have to realize. That going back to the last game, Belichick knew he was lucky to win. He was exceptionally lucky to win. Oh, yeah. So, you know, and with the, the advent of the Ravens being in the playoffs, uh, the Patriots have a way to go before they can get to that AFC championship game. Mm -hmm. You know, I guess I'm just curious as to how much James Harrison can really help the Patriots. I mean... 
obviously, yeah, they're going to pick his brain. Is that going to be enough to make a substantial difference? I think, you know, the fact that's Bill Belichick, I, I think heard he that can. he isn't as sharp as a camera. Well, I think a lot of a lot of people have heard that. So I mean, you know, I'm just saying, you know, Kimo Zabi when Tonto leaves the reservation, <laughs> you know, he it might not be the greatest loss in the world. I, I'm not too concerned with the loss of James Harrison from a talent standpoint. I guess the thing that concerns me the most is that James Harrison, according to players, was not willing to mentor T.J. Watt. Well, after he leaves New England this year, I hear he's going to play with the Beatles. <laughs> well, I mean... At it's this been point, a hard day's night, you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, at, listen, he's, he's already... According to most people, ruined his legacy as a stealer. Um, maybe I don't know. But see, this is a business, though. How many times have we seen players go to another team at the end of their career, or something happens? Brett Favre went to the Vikings, and you know he retired. Hall of Fame um, comes up. The Packers introduce him to the Ring of Honor, and blah blah blah. I, I think this is a business. These things happen. I think the relationship can be repaired. Swept under the rug. Yeah, I, I think it can happen. Because time heals all wounds. This is, this is business, man. It happens. You know? And with that being said, we have to have a word from our sponsors. We will be right back. Funding provided by Four Brothers. Four Brothers in downtown Newcastle. This program furnished by the MAD Unit, Mobile Auto Detailing, C. Michael Sad, at themadunit.com. Funding provided by Main Street Clothiers and Tailors, Washington Street, Newcastle. Welcome back to the Cedar Sports Corner, everybody. We're going to stay along the lines of football, but we're going to talk about um, kind of a shocking development in that the NFL has canceled the last Sunday night football game of the season. Maybe not so shocking to people such as our own Angelo Parada, but why don't you tell us why? They're, they're overdoing their, their, their market. They're saturating their market. They're drowning themselves. They've cheapened their product. And they've caused a lot of disarray in a season. The kneeling incident, wrong. Brr. You, you know, that isn't the place to protest. Anybody else protests at work, they get fired. Mm -hmm. Okay. Number two, if you take a look at football, which I dearly love, it is on. Monday night. Okay, you might get a break on Tuesday, but in some strange corners of the world, people have come up with Wednesday night football. Like, Idaho's playing Montana State. Extension. Mm -hmm. You know, and it'll mm -hmm. be on. And then, you flip to Thursday, and you get Thursday night football, whether it's pro or college. Friday, you get Friday night football, college and high school. Saturday, you get a ton of college games late in the season, the pros. Sunday, all pros all day, and you're back to Monday. So you're really only looking at Tuesday where nobody has the opportunity to even talk about or maybe say they like, dislike, or have some comment. So no one's looking forward to this whatever night because you got it every night of the week. It's no longer exclusive and you get it's too much. You know, too much of anything isn't good, you know. Um, you know, I, I I think the Monday night football could be saved 
if they gave up the Sunday night football. Mm -hmm. Don't think you need Sunday night football. And uh, I really believe that there shouldn't be any college games on Tuesday or Wednesday. You know, maybe you catch an outside game on Thursday. I don't think you need Thursday night football. Mm -hmm. It just messes up the week. So Friday, reserve it for the high schools. You know, and, and I think especially with Thursday night football, that really just seems, when they started doing that, that really has seemed to throw things out of whack, especially for fantasy football purposes, people who, you know, put money on fantasy football or, or betting. It just seems, yeah, like too much. And even sometimes there's games on Saturdays. I mean, that's rare, but it's like... Well, it's late yeah. in the season Saturday game, you know, so you have to really think, is it... You know, where do you need the break so people can enjoy that in between time to look forward to it? Right. You know, part of their song, looking forward to, everybody's been looking forward to Sunday night. Well, I guess not this week. Right. You know, and then with attendance, TV ratings, and I, I'm going to pick on the Millenniums again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Because they don't go and get wings and watch Monday Night Football. Mm -hmm. um, we used to go to one of the local fraternal orders here in town and get wings and a pitcher of pop and watch the game. And that's just not done. You know, and. Uh, if anybody needs to uh, know how to do that, I'll gladly tutor you in going out and having wings pop and watch a Monday Night Football. <laughs> Feel free to call me. <laughs> I am a specialist in that. I'm a specialist, too. Um, but I think we are about time for another break and a word from our sponsors now. Today's programming is brought to you by NCTV 45 and NC Radio 450, Newcastle's community television station. This program furnished by Sporting Goods, 23 East Washington Street, Newcastle. Call 724-658-2535. These fine businesses provided funding for this program. Gatherings, Town and Country, and On Target. I have to interrupt you here. I don't know if you heard about the protests up in Michigan. Can't say I have. Okay, I, I didn't know if you did. But uh, a couple of the cereal companies got together, and they're a little upset because there's less kinds of cereals in the bowl than there are football teams <laughs> in the bowl. <laughs> I, well, I know where you're going. I know what you're driving at here. And, um, and it's there's the, have you scratched your ear, ear lately bowl? The scrapbook toilet paper bowl, the, you know, my favorite, the BBVA Compass Community Bowl, which Pitt was in, I swear, like four years in a row or something like that. Here's, here's the deal. Um, First of all, there's no legacy. Oh, no. Now, if you were in the Liberty Bowl, the Gator Bowl, the Cotton Bowl, the Rose Bowl, the Sugar Bowl, the Fiesta Bowl, they had a history. Mm-hmm. Yeah, these other bowl games don't. Um, no. You know, when, when you're going the six and six, and you're being rewarded, rewarded um, by playing another team on national television with the same record, the same bottom, either the same bottom feeding part of their conference. The only um, upside to that would be the extra practices, but in terms of you know, I just, in terms of making a program look better, uh, I don't think so. And I don't blame a coach 
for accepting the bull bid? Every every major city should have a bull. They should sign an agreement right now that in, in Pittsburgh, if Pitt and West Virginia don't make a bull, which West Virginia got their hand, head handed mm -hmm. to them, mm -hmm. we'll play the Western Pennsylvania West Virginia Bowl backyard brawl in Pittsburgh. Yeah, well, that's an. Yeah. Uh, okay, I mean, I would rather see something that looked like it was going to be okay than something that's just helter skelter. Now, nobody really cares about Penn State playing Washington. Yeah. I mean, that's just like Notre Dame's taking their people from South Bend down to play LSU in Florida. And, and I don't think LSU has that big of a following outside of LSU. Mm -hmm. Well, I think it comes all down to brands. You know, Penn State and Notre Dame have brands. So no matter where, they're going to be... There are going to be teams and programs that bowl games would be happy to accept. Kellogg's and Post both have brands. Raisin brand. <laughs> you know, I mean, more cereal bowls than bowls. More bowl, yeah. There, there's more bowls than cereal bowls. At the end of the day, there's too many. I think there's too many bowl games. Um, and I think another thing too that frustrates me is that. I feel like there almost is no, like, consistency almost in terms of um, bowl games and bowl game selections. You know, the Final Four is a little, I guess, a little better than the BCS. Um, Dicey. Yeah, yeah, a, a little, a little better. Um, you know, I can't say that if I'm going, if my programs go to the BVA Compass Bowl three or four times in a row. That's something I want to But they to might not even be a bull next year. BVA Compass might be bought out by somebody else, and it might be something totally different. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm watching Duquesne basketball, because it's time to put up your Dukes. Winning five, winning five out of six games, I'm ready for Duquesne basketball. Our producer is our Duquesne basketball uh, What's the word? aficionado? Or, <laughs> I can't pronounce, I can never pronounce that word right. But... Uh, the bottom line, don't get so caught up with these bowl games. I want you to get caught up with our local programs such as Duquesne. <laughs> um, but uh, I think that's pretty much a wrap for the day. Yep, and it's because it's time to put up your dudes. It's time to put up your dudes, everybody. <laughs> and I hope everyone here enjoys the rest of your Funding provided by Four Brothers. Four Brothers in downtown Newcastle. A special thanks to the YMCA for caring about the Lawrence County community and providing funding for this program.